Hainham and Higher, Chapter 9 on Integration, the mixed questions, 9 out at the end, number 5. Calculate the area enclosed between the graph and the x-axis. This graph here, the graph of that particular function. Well, what does that look like? I know what that looks like. It's a parabola, the correct way round. There's no middle term, so it's symmetrical about the y-axis, and it's dropped down 25, so it looks like this. So there's the trapped area in there. What I'll need to know, where does it start and where does it finish? Well, that means the y coordinate should be zero, so I simply solve this part. There's only one mention of x, and it's not in an equation, so I can just solve it by swapping sides. So it's going to be plus or minus 5. So it goes from negative 5 to 5. Now, there's two things here. First thing, these areas, if I work them out, seeing the area enclosed between the x-axis and the curve, are going to be negatives. The other thing is, these two halves are going to be the same. So two things I have to do is this. I'll say the area is, instead of going all the way from negative 5 to 5, I'll just say it's double what it's going to be from 0 to 5, since it's symmetrical about the y-axis. The other part is, when I work this out, I know I'm going to expect a negative answer, because these little strips have got negative heights. But when it talks about the actual area, it's what you perceive. So the actual area perceived must be a positive amount. So I'm going to take, no matter what the answer was, for instance, if the answer was negative 5, I'm going to take the absolute value of it. This operator here, those two lines that you put on either side, stands for the absolute value. And the absolute value just means the positive part of it is returned. Which means, strictly speaking, I could express this whole area, including both parts, as two times the absolute value returned by that integral. But I'm not going to do that because that just looks a little bit messy, writing these absolute value signs in all the time. So I'm just going to be aware of them until I get to the end, and then I'll pop it in. Not quite good form, but it's just what generally is done. Right, integrating up to 3, divide by 3, straight away, I've got a wee messy part there. Constant goes back up to linear term, 25x, work it out at 5 and take away the answer at 0. So I've got one third of 5 cubed minus 25 times 5. Take away the, it's just the one product, so it'll be 0 minus 0. Now that whole thing is going to get doubled. So I've got two times that part disappears, and there both of those come to 125. I've got one third, take away one, so that's negative two thirds of 125 to work out. Again, the answer is going to be negative, but my, I'm going to express my answer as this. So I'm going to have the absolute value of negative 4 times 125 upon 3. So that's going to be a, oops, <coughs> yes it is, 500 upon 3. Now it's the positive part of it. And 500 upon 3 is going to be 1, 6, 6 and 2 thirds units squared. So the area enclosed between the curve and the x-axis is 166 and 2 thirds units squared. That was 80 two and a third on each side. And then part B, right, what's the area contained between this graph and the x-axis? Well, what would that look like roughly, if you just think of it? It's the correct way around, it's a positive x squared, it's dropped down one. The signs are opposite, so it's going to the right, so it's coming down something like this. So the area again is going to be a negative. When you carry out the integral, it'll be a negative quantity, which you then reinterpret as a positive sense of area. I'll need to find these two points. And it's not symmetrical, so unless I wanted to take half of the midpoint and double that area, I'm as well just going from the first to the last. And so I'll need to find these two zeros. So if that equals zero, I'll just need to do a quick factorization. Well, that's actually quite easy. Negative goes to the larger one. So that means it neg goes from negative a half to x equals one. So it's going from negative a half to one. Right, so the, the area is going to be not doubling in this case because I didn't have that symmetry about the y-axis. Obviously there is a symmetry, but I don't know if it's worth doing that. I'm going to go from negative a half to one for this. And again, because that graph is beneath the x-axis, my area elements are going downwards and it's going to be negative. So I'll have to reinterpret it by just using the absolute value of whatever I get. So. Add 1 to the power, divide by the power, nasty thirds. Add 1 to the power, divide by the power, and halves as well, jolly. Work it out at 1 and subtract the answer at negative 1. That's the integration done. Now it's just 
mega micro arithmetic. You can use your calculator, but the very least you have to do is the substitution to show exactly how it works. So it's two thirds of the upper limit cubed minus a half of the upper limit squared minus the upper limit. Take away two thirds of the lower limit cubed minus a half of the lower limit squared minus a, the lower limit. Now you could just type the whole lot into your calculator and that would do fine because all this arithmetic is just going to collapse into a single mark's worth. This was the important bit, knowing to integrate, finding the zeros to get the limit of integration, the process of integration, the substitution, and now it's just arithmetic. It's just a real paste. So what's that? That's two thirds minus a half minus one. Well, that's not so bad. And what's this part? Well, that two will cancel out one of them. So it'll be negative a twelfth, because three fourths are twelve. That's going to be an eighth, because there's three of these twos underneath. And it'll still be a negative, negative an eighth, and that'll be plus a half. And this time with all these different, it's not really worth saying, we'll pair them and pair them and possibly pair them. You probably as well just say, what does that come to? What does that come to? Or just have done in your calculator. Well, for this bit, I think I'll just do it as a single fraction. So that's sixths. And they'll have to be 24ths. So in terms of 6, that's going to be double that, so 4. 3 times that, so 3, and that'll be 6. So that's the first part. This one, that'll be negative 2. That'll be 3 times that, negative 3. And that'll have to be plus 12. So that's negative, because that, that's ne negative 5 6 for the first part. Take away, and for the second part, I've got 7 24ths. Make it all into 24ths now. So I've got... That'll be 4 times it is negative 20, so negative 27 24 which equals negative, they both divide by 3 to give 9 eighths. So I'll just put my final answer here, so that means the area is going to be the absolute value of that, which is 9 eighths, and there are no scale points, so I'll just say square units, or if you like, 1 and 1 eighth square units. Either of those would do. And this big mass of arithmetic here, you could just do in your calculator. Although it probably takes ages just to type that in in the first place. Can't be helped. Here's question five.